Hello and welcome to another podcast episode. I'm Ray from sunny Worthing. Well, it's not so sunny today. Worthing, south coast of the UK, about 10 miles west of Brighton. Talking of which, I went to Hove, actually, the other evening. Trish and I popped over there to pick something up. It was, what, six, seven miles, eight miles perhaps at the most. Coming back, absolutely atrocious traffic. Apart from potholes everywhere, wrecking the car's suspension, there was a road that they closed because, I don't know, they're doing some sort of repair work to it. And the A27 from Hove to Worthing, well, no, to Lansing, to be fair. I look it up on the map. <laughs> Absolutely chock a block with traffic, gridlock. We were moving all the time, but about five miles an hour. The traffic, I don't know about other counties. I'm in West Sussex. Sussex is huge, so they've made East Sussex, West Sussex and all that nonsense. The traffic is horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Wherever you go, there are roadworks, temporary traffic lights, roads closed, massive potholes, so you, you're swerving all over the road as if you're a drunk driver. It's ridiculous. I suppose it was the last, what, five miles, six miles. It took over an hour over an hour, well it would do wouldn't it, at five miles an hour, over an hour, there's people in this queue and they're all getting too hot and bothered, I mean there was no road rage, I know I've called this episode road rage, it's not <laughs> probably the best of titles, but there we are, dreadful, I'm going to moan more about the traffic a bit later on, let's moan about the weather, no there's nothing to moan about, today, where are we, I don't know what, uh, 19th of May, Friday I believe, yeah Friday, 19th of May, the time is 20 to 9 in the morning. Uh, millibars on the old barometer, 1026. 76% humidity, 13 centigrade, which is 55 Fahrenheit. Yesterday, that, sorry about that banging, that's me on my expensive uh, audio mixer desk. <laughs> the pine table for three quid that I won't mention because I get told off if I mention it too many times. Several of you said that. Don't keep on about the damn table, sorry. Anyway, Bob. Hello, Bob. He said, how about noisy neighbours? Do you know, we don't have noisy neighbours. This was an idea for an episode, which uh, I can talk about if you want to uh, email me, raiserants at protonmail.com. Email me if you've got noisy neighbours or awkward neighbours. I'm really lucky here. We are really lucky. We've got lovely neighbours all round. I have to say that because I know a few of them listen. <laughs> no, seriously, we do have lovely neighbours. Everyone helps each other out. Everyone's friendly. It's really nice. Barbara from Michigan. Hello, Barbara. Nice to hear from you again. Um, you say, cause remember I said to people, what's the weather like where you are? Well, no one bothered to answer except Barbara. So thank you for that, Barbara. You're the only one that's actually bothered. 60 degrees Fahrenheit you've got. What did I just say? Oh, 55 is, yes, yeah, so it's a little bit above 13 to see. And Barbara, you were saying about a cherry blossom and all this coming out and everything becoming green. It's lovely, isn't it? I think that was the beginning of May, you said. Everything's growing here. When we got back from the Isle of Wight, went out to the back garden. The grass is about six inches high. Everything's come up. The runner bean plants are up. I put tomato plants in yesterday. Uh, other seeds have popped their heads up above the soil. All the, the fig tree down the garden, loads of figs on it. Massive leaves all appearing. Unfortunately, the figs, it's not hot enough here. They don't, I don't know what they do. They don't ripen or whatever properly. You can't eat them, uh, which is a shame because I like figs. But yes, um, thanks for that, Barbara. And also the book idea. Thank you for that. I have emailed you about that. I'll talk about that when I've, I've tried to get a copy of a book, but I'll talk about that when I've actually got the copy. So that sounds interesting, Barbara. Thank you for that. I had an email from Podbean, you know, the host that uh what, what do they do they host these podcast episodes and take lots of money from me well not lots but they take money anyway they sent me a little badge to put on the the website 300 episodes it says congratulations so thank you to podbean for that well no they should thank me they take i'm paying them they should pay me really shouldn't they have i mentioned the flag the wind direction i don't think i have oh it's blowing now it's coming here wind from the east a little bit of wind from the east it was all flaccid and limp and doing nothing earlier just wrapped round the pole 
but there is a slight breeze now. The roads on the Isle of Wight, you know, they had a, a kind of road upgrade on the Isle of Wight a few years ago, and they've resurfaced so many of the main roads. Even some of the side roads aren't full of potholes like ours are here. I really don't understand what's going on. Oh, I read in the, uh, what was it, Twitter the other day, or some newspaper, I forget where, but they mentioned on Twitter there was this country road, a rural sort of district, and there was a, a crater. It wasn't a pothole, it was more like a crater. And the road had been closed for several weeks. Someone, persons unknown, as they put in the article, got a load of concrete and filled in this crater. And uh, probably quick setting concrete. Anyway, that job done. He moved the, the signs that said road closed, chucked them in the bushes, <laughs> and the road was open. And of course, people started using it. The council, old Jobsworth at the council, heard about this and closed the road. No, can't do that. You haven't got permission to do road repairs, blah, blah, blah. Health, safety, standards, all this nonsense. They've closed the road again and they've said it will take several weeks before we can get round to it. What a load of rubbish. What is wrong with the concrete the chaps put in there? All right, perhaps it's not the type they would use. I reckon he's done a better job than they would have done anyway. What a load of rubbish. Honestly, this is why people get so annoyed. Some of the potholes in the roads near where I am, they are, well, they're lethal. Now, they are lethal. There's one place you come out of the tip. You know, the, what do they call it? They don't call it the tip anymore, the rubbish dump. Is it the, the re, refuse recycling centre? Ah, That's the tip, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, it's the rubbish dump. You come out of there, and if you want to turn right, look it up on the, on the map. No, don't bother. You turn round to the right, and the road, it's like the, the moon. It's full of craters and you've got to go so slowly because you just wreck your car, suspension, the tyres and everything. And it's been like it, not just for weeks or months. That's always been bad, that section. And now it's worse than ever. And what are they doing? Nothing. Do you know, we always had, I'm not going into politics, but we've always had a Conservative council in Worthing and they were useless. We've now got Labour council in Worthing and they're useless. <laughs> I don't know. What is the answer? I really don't know. An analogy of mine is, take a car. You've got an old car. Something goes wrong with it. You know, one of the lights doesn't work. Oh, I'll fix that later. Then another light doesn't work. Perhaps one of the brake lights doesn't work. Yeah, I must get round. I'll do that at the weekend. The weekend comes and goes and, oh, the radio's packed up. I'll have to get that looked at. I'll get that looked at next week. Oh, it's misfiring. There's something wrong with the engine. It's misfiring a bit. Now oh, I'll do that. I'll sort that out. In the end, you've got so many jobs to do on the car. It's basically a write-off. You know, you take it to a garage and they'll say, well, it's going to take us about three weeks to do all these jobs. You know, why didn't you get them done one at a time? Same with the potholes. When they all started, all these potholes years ago, why didn't they fill them all in properly then? Not No, not just fill them in. This is the trouble. They just chuck a bit of tarmac in there and say, that's it, job done. Well, that's no good. You've got to do it properly. Of course, now there are so many, probably millions of potholes in the whole country that it's impossible to do it. You can't do it. It's just not the time or the money. Well, I suppose there's the time, but there's not the money. Well, there would be the money if they didn't waste it on other things. But there we are. Traffic, honestly, traffic on the main roads now, it is just horrendous. We went to Arundel, well, Amberley, museum yesterday actually came back through Arundel traffic everywhere lorries cars gridlocked absolute nightmare got back to we dropped her mother-in-law off eventually got back to Worthing and I had to nip out to East Worthing Trish wanted to drop something off uh, quite a heavy thing so we had to take it by car honestly roadworks temporary traffic lights gridlocked cars everywhere roads closed we were what we were three quarters of an hour for what should have been a 20 minute trip there and back, basically. And I said to Trish when we got back, I'm not driving anymore. I've had enough of it. I really have. I mean, I've got to drive. Obviously, it was just uh, I had a moment of road rage. No, I don't do road rage. But I just when we got back, I said, that's it. I'm not driving anymore. It's no good. I understand. I understand when people say, oh, don't bang on about the old days. It's no good. My saying Oh, back in the 1960s, the roads were clear. It was lovely because, obviously, 
There weren't the amount of people. There weren't the amount of cars back then. But it was lovely. It really was lovely. On a Sunday in town, you could drive in town, park anywhere, hardly any traffic. It was wonderful. Now, of course, there are too many people, too many cars. And the, this is a, this will make you laugh. Well, it probably won't. White lines on the roads, you know, arrows this way, an arrow that way, A27 this way, A302 or, or something that way. Grid bits, you know, these crosshatch bits, don't go here, don't go there, don't go left. There's so many lines in the road. Coming back from Portsmouth, where we got off the ferry, I'm getting completely confused. Sack nav's saying, turn left, turn left. Patricia say, no, no, not this one. Next, next left. I mean, luckily I've got her sitting next to me to help. The lines in the road just make it worse. Out of town, all traffic to the west. East traffic, go this way. <laughs> Into town, town centre. You're thinking, what? The sat now saying, turn left. Trisha's saying, no, don't. <laughs> a nightmare. I don't know. It's There's too many road signs. I think this came up a few years ago on telly. They were talking about it on the news. So many road signs and a lot of them are unnecessary. And why is it? You know, the the white circle with the black line through, that means you can do the, the sort of uh, speed limit. Uh, on a, a ordinary road, it's 60, isn't it? On a dual carriageway, it's 70. You turn into, a, you're doing a 30 mile an hour place, a little village, you turn into a lane and it says 60. You know, the maximum speed limit you is 60. And it's a little country lane. What sort of idiot is sitting behind a desk saying... Right, we're going to put a couple of road signs there saying you can do a maximum of 60 down this very small, very narrow country, winding country lane. That'll be 60. This big road on the seafront in Worthing, this huge road, will make that 30. I mean, the, the people are obviously mentally ill, aren't they? In fact, a friend of ours lives in Portsmouth and she was saying the other day that Portsmouth is now not recognisable at all. She's lived there most of her life and it's just not the same at all. She said they've wrecked it. It is a complicated road system, but they've made it worse, she was saying, because they've, in trying to improve everything, they've added more road signs, written more stuff in the road itself. It had, Don't do this, do that. That it's just got so bad that even the locals that live there, they now get confused. They don't know where they're going. <laughs> so... I don't know. It's people behind desks, isn't it? Was it Barbara Car Castle? Do you remember she was the Minister of um, Transport and you know, all the road system and everything was down to her and she couldn't even drive, didn't even have a driving licence. No experience of r driving on the road at all. And yet she's the Minister of Transport. I mean, that's, that's another mentally ill person that decided to do that. Oh, for goodness sake, surely... There must be someone with a little bit of sense that can look at a town and say, right, this is it's not working, this is all wrong. Let's do this, do that, change that, change that, and it'll be fine. That's all it wants, someone with a bit of common sense. How about London? I, well, I don't go to London anymore. I'm not going up there, disaster. But these, uh, what is it, the, the ULES things, ultra low emission zones? <laughs> And there's the LTNs. Have you heard of the LTNs? Look this up on uh, on Twitter or wherever. Uh, if you know you live outside the UK, you may not have heard about all this. LTN, low traffic neighbourhood. What they do is they put uh, huge concrete things and pillars at the end of your road so you can't get in or out. And that helps, doesn't it? You've got low neighbourhood, <laughs> low traffic neighbourhood because no traffic can get there. Delivery people, post vans or the rest of it. The, the gas man that comes to sort your boiler out, the electrician that's going to sort out your lights, he can't get his van to you with all his tools and bits and pieces. He has to park down the road and walk some, which he won't do, of course. He can't lug all his stuff. So what do they do? Your customer phones up. Could you have a look at my gas boiler? No, I'm not going to your address. I can't get there. Sorry, bye. <laughs> Who is... Well, in London, it's Sadiq Khan, isn't it? They reckon... I mean, I don't know anything about it. I don't go to London, but from what I've seen on Twitter, it's a nightmare. Ambulances, buses, stuck in massive queues. I'm not going to mention cycle lanes too much because I know a lot of cyclists, they think it's a good idea, which it probably is. It's a good idea to have a cycle lane. But 
what happens is, from what I've read again on Twitter, this isn't my experience because we don't really have cycle lanes around here, but what seems to happen is, from the photos I've seen, all the traffic is gridlocked and the cycle lane, a big wide cycle lane on part of the road, you've got a couple of bikes. So that's, you know, that's causing division, isn't it, between people. It, it, the motorists and the cyclists, there's arguments. And, and of course, then, then on top of potholes and all the rest of it, we've got people blocking the road because they're protesting about something and they're walking slowly or sitting in the road. They glue themselves to the road. So all the traffic in London or wherever comes to a standstill. I mean, basically, everything is, well, it's gone to pot. <laughs> Excuse the pun, pothole. It's gone to pot. The infrastructure, the whole road thing, has just basically ground to halt, gone to pot and fallen apart. And of course, some, not all, but some motorists don't help. Coming back from Hove, the two lanes of traffic merged into one. OK, so people have got to let each other in. You know, you can't just not let people in. And there was a car a little bit ahead of us. He wasn't going to let anyone in. Oh, no, no, no. Bumper to bumper with the car. In front. He would not let anyone in. Why do they do that? They're going to lose one car's length, you know, a few feet. And this chap who was trying to merge into the traffic, I let him in as, as it came to my turn to be where he was sort of thing. I let him in. And he put his... Oh, that's another thing. He put his hand up to wave to thank me. That's another thing. You can't uh, put your hazards on for a couple of clicks, you know, click, 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 just to say thank you. Lorries, buses, they all used to do that. You're not allowed to do that anymore. Thousand pound fine. Well, I don't know. I think it's a... Th- is it a thousand pound fine? I think it's against the rules of the road now, anyway. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to flash people with your headlamps. You're not allowed to do this. You can't do... I mean, you might as well just not bother to go anywhere. This is what they're trying to do, though. Have you heard of the 15-minute cities? Everything you want is within 15 minutes of where you live. <laughs> That's not going to work. They're trying it in... Is it Oxford? They're trying it there. I think they're doing the LTN thing and the, the 15... What's that ding in? The 15-minute city thing. And people are, are up in arms. You know, they're ripping down things. Oh, the ULES cameras the ultra-low emission zone cameras that have cost hundreds of thousands of pounds to install. Hang on, newsflash. Nothing important. Well, it never is, is it? It's just all rubbish. Um, What was I saying? Yeah, people are ripping them down. They're climbing up the poles, they've got cutters and tools, and they're ripping all the cameras down. Obviously, I don't condone that because it's a criminal offence, but it's understandable because people have had enough. I, I can see... Uh, I don't know, sometime in the future, some sort of uprising, because it's now got to the stage where there are so many things that aren't right. People have had enough. Uh, People are getting enraged. Uh, The people that are protesting in the roads now, motorists are dragging them out of the roads. It's only a question of time before someone's hurt. Seriously, perhaps. There's going to come a stage, I'm sure, when... There's some sort of uprising against all this nonsense that's going on. I used to enjoy driving. I used to love it in my old car. In a proper old car with leather seats and uh, (laughs) none of this computerised engine management rubbish system things that lights come on and say, your engine's had it, you've got to stop. No, it hasn't had it at all. Something wrong with the, what is it, engine management, EMS, is it they call it? You lift the bonnet on the car these days. Look at it, it's just full of plastic boxes, right? Shut the lid, nothing I can do there. Take it to the garage, oh, 1,500 pounds. Well, what was wrong with it? Oh, just a wire was off, that's all. 1,500, oh, plus that, of course. <laughs> Stone the crows. I don't know. On a brighter note, what is there on a brighter note I can go on about? I don't think there is a brighter note. There is, actually. The summer's coming. We had a great time in the Isle of Wight. The summer's coming. We don't have any more holidays booked. We normally have a couple of holidays a year, sometimes the Isle of Wight twice, but we've nothing else booked at the moment. Oh, we're going to Hastings. We're going to see a Pink Floyd tribute band that we've seen before, and they're playing next in Hastings. That's later on in the year, so we're staying overnight in Hastings. That'll be good. Nice place, Hastings. Look it up on the map. (laughs) It's just along the coast uh, east of where we are. I don't know how many miles. What is Hastings? 40, 40 miles, is it? Maybe 50 on the way to Dover. 
So that'll be nice, a, a bit of a change. Unfortunately, the coronation, the street party, well, it wasn't a street party in the end that they had here. We were away. That was the day we left for the Isle of Wight on the Monday, Bank Holiday Monday. Unfortunately, it rained. But I think most people couldn't make it anyway. They were doing this, they were doing that. They got all this other stuff arranged, pre-arranged. So there, I think there were a few that, that sat out there and had a couple of beers and a bottle of wine or two. So that was good. Something else I'm looking forward to. I think, is it June or July? My son and his family are coming over. They're in North Carolina, of course. So they're coming over to see us. And uh, he's a bit of a computer guru. So I've got various jobs for him. <laughs> For him, I said, when you come over here, I'm going to lock you in my uh, my studio type room. And I said, I've got my Surface Pro for you to look at. I've got my PC. I want you to sort that. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be locked in the room for about three days. You are. You are. Here's the thing. When he gets it, I should say, right, here's the thing. Upstairs, come on. Right, there's the PC. I want that sorted out. <laughs> so now that'd be nice, though, to see them all. Haven't seen them for several years. What with COVID and lockdowns and can't travel, you can't do this, can't do that. Well, a bit like driving, isn't it? Won't be long before the rules of the road will state you are not allowed onto any highway in a motor vehicle. <laughs> that would solve it, wouldn't it? Cars are banned. Everything's banned from the roads. Empty roads. Oh, bliss. I remember when parking meters were first introduced in our town here. I forget what date that was. I remember driving downtown and I wanted to park somewhere and there's this meter. What was it you had to put in it? 20 pence or something? I don't know. And I didn't have any change. I oh, have to go to a shop. Yeah, excuse me, can you change a pound note? Because they were pound notes in those days. Proper money. And you, know, you get change in a shop. And I came out and there's this traffic warden person. You haven't put any money in the meter? I, said, I know I haven't. I'm getting money from the shop, aren't I? To put in the damn thing. And, well, oh, really, you know, you, you shouldn't go off and leave your car if you haven't put money in the meters. Well, you know, I haven't got any change. <laughs> anyway, that was all right. I put the money in there. And then you get an excess charge. If you get back late from wherever you've been, and the meter would say excess or something, then you get busted. <laughs> then they took all the meters away. Well, that was good. And they've got car parks. That's fine if you want to pay about £10 a minute to park. I'm sure in towns now, Worthing, Brighton, from what I've seen anyway, they try to keep you away. They don't want you to go shopping there. They don't want you to go shopping in Brighton. You just can't afford it. You could go on the train. Of course, they're going on strike again, aren't they? The trains now, they're going on strike again. So if you want to get the train to Brighton, you can't because they'd be on strike. If you want to drive, well, you can drive. It might take you about five hours to get there. Then when you get there, it might take you about five pounds an hour to park or more, more than that, in fact. So... What do you do? You don't go to Brighton. Simples. Back in the 60s, I, I know I know that it was less traffic and all that then, but there weren't all the one-way streets. Now, this is what messes things up. A lot of streets are one way. So if you want to get to somewhere, you've got to go round and round, all round the houses to get to this one point, which you could have done quite easily if it weren't all the one-way systems, which I think in many, not in every case, but in many cases make it worse for getting from sort of A to B. And a lot of the pedestrianised areas, as they call them, basically roads which are now people only, no cars, great idea, but you've got to have deliveries. So you do get vans and lorries driving up the pedestrianised bits. And again, it's confusing. Then you've got the e-scooters that whiz around at about 150 miles an hour on roads, pavements, wherever they like. No one's quite sure whether they're illegal or not. Apparently they are illegal to be on the road, but no one bothers about that. People park on pavements. Well, that's illegal, but no one bothers about that. <laughs> and there's a stretch of road near us. It's a dual carriageway and it's 30 miles an hour. What do people do? I'm doing 30, trying to be an upright pillar of the community, a, you know, a decent citizen. I'm plodding along at 30. I'm holding up all the traffic. They're whizzing past me at 50 and 60. Some of them blast me. Brrr. You know, look at this idiot doing 30 on a dual carriageway. That stretch is 30. I think I mentioned to you once before, I twittered the police, West Sussex police or whatever they are. I twittered them and I said, oh, you tweet them, don't you? 
I said, wait, this bit of dual carriageway, I'm doing 30. I'm in everyone's way. Is it all right if I go 50 or 60 like they all do? And they said, no, because you get busted. <laughs> so I went, I went back to them and said, well, why don't you bust them? Oh, well, we do. No, they don't. See, they're lying. They used to have a speed trap. There was always a speed trap there. This little place called the Rose Wilmot Youth Centre. There was a place there where the cops would just sort of sneak around the bushes with their speed trap gun. And they booked people left, right and centre. But they don't do that anymore. They've, they've just given up, I think, gone home. One thing I've often thought that might be a good idea, initially you might laugh, but how about this? Get yourself a little boat, you know, a little outboard motor. If you want to go to Brighton, just go along the coast in your little boat, chugging along, you know, past uh, Lansing, Shoreham, Hove, your Fisher's Gate, all that nonsense out there. Pop yourself out to Brighton. Uh, there is a marina there that will probably charge you about 250 million quid to park your boat there for half an hour. But just pull up on the beach somewhere <laughs> if you've got a little boat. I mean, other boats land on the beach, don't they, from France? So you could just park your little boat on the beach somewhere, go and do a bit of shopping, back to your boat and uh, put off back to Worthing <laughs> or wherever you happen to be. I mean, that's great. What an idea, isn't it? You want to go to Littlehampton. Instead of all the horrendous traffic nonsense and all the idiotic things going on the roads, pop down to the seafront, get in your little boat, pootle along to Littlehampton, park somewhere there, perfect. Same with the Isle of Wight. I mean, instead of driving to Portsmouth and all that and the ferry, get into your little boat and pootle off over <laughs> to the Isle of Wight, to Bembridge or somewhere, or Fishbourne. Lovely. Of course, you haven't got a car when you get there, but you could hire a car for probably £250 a day. Seriously, that is something I've often thought about. I mean, I don't like the sea. I don't like boats and I can't swim. But if you live fairly near the seafront, uh, a lot of people have got boats in their front gardens. You know, they just take them across the road to the beach and off they go. Perhaps people do that. That is a good idea, isn't it? I remember once, uh, who was I with? My brother-in-law. He, he had a, was it his little boat? We went chugging off in this little boat. We went uh, west from Worthing and we're just chugging on a little outboard motor do, 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 do. that was great and then when we wanted to come back we got as far as Ferring look it up on the map Ferring village <laughs> we wanted to come back so we turned the boat round and we're kind of against the the tide I know we're going along the coast but it was against and we're not moving it's chugging away and we're not moving and this chap came out to his garden sort of backed onto the beach and he called out to us. He said, are you not OK out there? And we said, well, no, not really. And uh, anyway, what he did was, it, it was really nice of him. We put the boat in his front garden. It's only a small boat, with his back garden, sorry. We put the boat in his back garden and he gave us a lift back to where our car was in Worthing. Oh, no, Goring, I think we'd left the car. And then what we did when the, the tide sort of changed, we went back got into the boat and came back. Oh, it was a complete nightmare. So yes, if you're going to do the boat idea, just check the tide and everything like that because you might find yourself marooned somewhere. <laughs> the only reason I went in that little boat was because we were only a few yards out from the shore. You know, you could get out and actually sort of walk. <laughs> Perhaps that's what we should have done, get out of the boat and push it back to Goring. But uh, of course, the tide was changing all the time. But no, I don't like boats. I've never liked boats. Ever since I worked on them when, uh, when I was in marine electronics, doing the, the radar, the sonar, ship-to-shore radio, I had to go to Southampton, Portsmouth, Pool in Dorset, Shoreham Harbour. All the work I did was on boats. Uh, that's where my, dis I won't say hatred, but dislike for boats came about. I don't like boats, probably because I can't swim. But that's an idea. I wonder whether people do that, just hop in their little boat and nip along to the next village or town. If you live on the seafront, why not? Thanks for all your emails about the NHS, the National Health Service. Loads of people commenting about I'm not going to read them all out because there are so many and a lot of conflicting ideas and uh, opinions and the rest of it, of course, as there would be. As I said uh, in the last, was it last Sunday's episode, I've only ever had good experience of the National Health Service whenever I've needed a, a doctor or hospital treatment. Fortunately, hasn't been many times, but it has been exceptionally brilliant. I have to say that. And I'm not saying that because we've got three nurses in the family. How about that? Three nurses. 
all well one of them's retired now but all worked for the nhs of course so yeah i'm not just saying that because of them but it is a brilliant system it just needs organizing a bit like the roads isn't it in towns the roads it wants someone to sit down and say right we've got too many problems let's sort this out what are the problems you write down on a bit of paper what the problems are and then on another bit of paper solve each problem as you i don't know as you think about it surely it can't be that difficult can it a lot of you have said that you've had brilliant experience of the national health service Others have said it should be paid for, or the whole thing should be privatised. Well, of course, it was originally, before the NHS came along, was it 1949? Was it Bevin, wasn't it? The Labour chap, Bevin, did he introduce the health service? I think it was him. But before that, of course, you had to pay for the doctor to call or to go and see him. And uh, as you might remember, I mentioned that my grandmother, or grandfather rather, he would give the doctor vegetables you come to treat one of my kids, uh, they'll have a couple of cabbages, <laughs> have a pound of carrots. <laughs> but that's the way it was. And that seemed to work. Well, it worked in as much as if a, you know, a doctor, I think most of them were quite OK with accepting goods uh, instead of money because people didn't have money. So um, what do I owe you for that? Or well, give me a goat and a chicken. <laughs> I mean, that's going back to pre-money times, isn't it? Imagine that, the bartering and things. How much do you want for those sheep over there? Oh, dear. For those sheep, what have you got? Six sheep? I'll tell you what, I'll give you two cows and a chicken. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> you got a deal. But that's the way it was, wasn't it? Pre-money. When did money first... Here we go. I must look this up. When did money first come about? Coins. And there were Roman coins, weren't there? So they were around then. Money was around back then. But I don't know. I wonder who first thought of an idea. I'll tell you what... Let's have lumps of metal and we call it money. So instead of giving me a couple of goats and a cow, you can give me four of those coins, four of those chunks of metal. I don't know. That's interesting. I quite like history. As I said before, I didn't listen at school. I was too busy having interests in other things such as electronics, radios, girls, too many other things to be interested in. Who wants to worry about when money was invented? <laughs> I've mentioned this to people in the past, older people like me, and they've all said, they've all agreed, oh yeah, I wish I'd listened at school, wasn't interested then, but I am now, I'm interested in history now, I'm interested in geography now, whereas at school, I, I don't know, it's, it, when you're young, there's other stuff on your mind, as I said, what are we doing after school? Oh, we're going over the woods, we're going to look at those tadpoles in the pond, we're going to see if those newts are still in the pond. Always stuff going on. I want a bat detector. I looked them up online the other day. For a decent one, you've got to spend over £100. I used to go over to the woods, and when it's dusk, the daylight's going, the sun's going down, the bats would come out of the trees, throw a stone up in the air, the bats would come out of the trees, swoop down to the stone, realise it's not food, swoop back up again into the trees. Fantastic. I love a bat detector. You know, basically what it does, their high-frequency sonar they use they're sort of click 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 you can hear it it converts into audio audible sound for us so our ears can hear it if you see what i mean but they're hugely expensive there are cheap ones i saw one on online the other day was it 12 pounds something and i thought well, hang on a minute 12 pounds you know what that's not going to work is it or if it does it's going to be pretty naff that's a good word isn't it naff do you remember porridge with ronnie ronnie barker wasn't it I think they must have wanted to rip, find a word that wasn't offensive, not a, a sort of swear word, not an expletive, but sounds good. So they said naff. Oh, that's rather naff. <laughs> that's obviously replaced uh, another word, which we won't go into. But uh, yes, a good word, that. So it's Friday, as I said, and we're not going up to our club tonight. We didn't go last week because we were in the Isle of Wight. We didn't go the week before because we were getting ready to go to the Isle of Wight. And we're not going to go today because we've only just got back from the Isle of Wight. But I think we're going next Friday because it's the music quiz. So we've got sister-in-law and her husband and a couple of friends. We're all going to go there. And I forget what we call ourselves. You call yourself something like, I don't know, the, the West Street Gang or whatever you call What did we call ourselves? I can't remember. You know, I can't remember anything these days, but... Not to worry. So that's a week today, of course. And we've got nothing. Oh, yes, we have. We've got to go to Chichester. 
Look that up on the map. That's going to be a nightmare journey. Chichester on the A27. Oh, that's through Arundel, the nightmare of Arundel. In Chichester, they're a bit like Milton Keynes. They've got 1,500 roundabouts in half a mile of road. Well, not quite, but it seems that way. We're taking the tortoise over to see an, an erotic, no, not an erotic vet, <laughs> an exotic, exotic reptile vet person. I'm sure she's not erotic. Well, she might be, I don't know. So we're taking the tortoise over there. That's probably going to cost £1,500. But we need him checked out because Trish says that he's wheezing a bit. You know, when you hear them breathing, that he's wheezing a little bit. It's probably nothing, but we're going to have a thorough check on the on the tortoise by uh, an exotic. Now, the, the vet isn't it? No, it, what is it? Yeah, the exotic reptile. I don't know. You know what I mean, don't you? Oh, here we go. Can you hear that noise? The dustmen are here. Yeah, I mustn't get over to the vet and say, are you are you specialist neurotic vet? Neurotic. I'll probably get thrown out. As the dustmen are here, I'm going to have a break because you won't be able to hear a thing with them bashing around out there. Just going back to driving and roads and the rest of it for a minute. I know several youngsters who don't want to drive. They don't want to take their tests. They don't want to learn. And from what I understand, the reason is... It's all too expensive. The price of fuel, diesel, petrol, it's just horrendous. Cars are horrendously expensive. In my day, when I was a boy, you could pick up a car. My first car, I think, was £50. Now, OK, I know that's back then when money, you know, the value of it all was different. But what's that equivalent to now? I don't know. But it was cheap. Motoring was a lot cheaper back then. These days, you can't buy an old bang well you can but you're not allowed on the road with it you know we, we buy old bangers you could buy a car really cheap you'd have to do it up a bit work on the engine get it going and it didn't cost you a fortune whereas now there aren't old bangers are there you know you need i don't know what what are cars the what's the second hand car perhaps the cheapest is it two thousand pounds to get something that's roadworthy i really don't know I don't know, but a lot of youngsters these days, I know several, as I said, that they're not going to bother, can't be bothered, get a driving licence. The traffic, all the traffic problems, the price of it all, they're just not bothering, which I think is a shame because without a car, if you're not unable to drive, you haven't got a car, it can be really awkward. Orcs, as my granddaughter used, I don't think she says that now, orcs, it's rather orcs, granddad. So I don't know. I wouldn't like to be without a car. Obviously, the older I get, the day is going to come when I can't drive anymore. Trisha's dad, he stopped driving. He didn't tell anyone. He didn't say anything. He just said to her mum, he started saying, look, oh, you drive today, you drive. And she'd say, OK. I mean, fortunately, she's a good driver. And she would drive them over to see us and then drive them back. And everywhere they went, he'd say, oh, you drive. And it was a couple of weeks later, I think, that uh, they were round here. And Trish said, you've stopped driving, have you, Dad? And he said, well, no, 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 I'm, I'll be driving again. You know, I'm just having a break. But he had actually stopped driving. For some reason, I think he didn't want to say, that's it, I've given up. I won't miss driving. Well, in a way, I will. But I, I don't know. Here we go. I'm contradicting myself. I'm going to get emails saying, you contradict yourself. I will miss driving in some respects, but I think in the main, I won't miss it. It's just such a nightmare. I had an email from Wendy the other, hello Wendy, if you're listening, uh, totally unrelated to driving, but she said, new houses these <laughs> new houses these days are rubbish. Her and her husband just bought a new house and half the back wall fell out. <laughs> I mean, obviously they can go back to the, whoever built it or whatever and get it sorted. She said, that's not a problem. But they, they'd only moved in, only been a, in there a week or two. And the wind caught the back door and it slammed shut, as they do, which is fine. And in slamming shut, the door and the door frame and the window <laughs> in the kitchen all fell out. Then the wall above it, half that fell out. So she said they're left with a big hole in the back of their brand new house. I must admit, Wendy, I do like older properties. Ours is now, what is it, 1922? Yeah, hundred and. 102 years old, isn't it? Is it? No, 101 years old. <laughs> Where are we? 23? Yeah, 101 years old. And I like it. I know things go wrong. We've had the roof leaking. We've had the pointing done on the back wall and all the cement. 
came out of the brickwork and we had water pouring in the dining room and the kitchen. We've had various problems, but it's over 100 years old, so there will be these problems. But it's a solid house. I don't think anything's going to fall apart here. It's built like a tank. You know, the brick walls are solid. The floorboards are proper thick floorboards. None of this modern chipboard rubbish that they cut up into bits and pieces. What's this, news flash? Oh, no, no, that's my sister-in-law. She's enjoying shopping at Sainsbury's. <laughs> well, that's something to put on uh, on WhatsApp, isn't it? She's enjoying shopping at Sainsbury's. That's good. I hate shopping. I hate driving. I hate shopping. <laughs> oh, I have to say the thing to Trish. She says, can you tell me the things you like rather than things you don't like? Because it'd be a lot quicker. And it is. But no, Wendy, new houses. You're quite right. They are. Well, I won't say they're rubbish. Well, they are rubbish. Yes, I think that is the word to use. In comparison, you know, when you look at a house built 100 years ago to one built now, then the modern ones are rubbish. But there again, isn't everything modern? Uh, isn't everything rubbish compared to things years ago? Electric kettle years ago, it was a, a metal kettle, chromium plated, proper handle, a you know, really robust thing, built like a tank. Do you remember the swan kettles, the adverts for swan kettles? Boiler was it boil a pint of water or whatever in 90 seconds they, they were solid as a rock and you could replace the heating element if it uh, packed up just go to your local electrical shop heating element for a swan kettle yep there you go two shillings and sixpence halfpenny. <laughs> and you could fit it yourself you didn't have to unscrew the back bit and fit it yourself whereas these days plastic rubbish kettles everything's plastic rubbish isn't it I don't know how many toasters, electric toasters, we've gone through. When well, one packs up, the other one just burns the bread and sets fire to your, to your bread. So there goes your marmalade on toast. Where's the toast? Oh, that's on fire over there, look. <laughs> so what happens? Oh, the toaster needs looking at. Well, you can't have it looked at. You can't repair it. You can't get any parts. Put it in the bin or take it to the tip and put it in the special designated skip that says old toasters that burn your toast for electrical items isn't it it's all separate these days oh by the way i was going to do some uh recording wasn't i in the woods in uh, on the isle of wight but i didn't well i did but there wasn't much point there's just bird song and i thought there's there's no point you don't hear bird song do you no you don't of course you don't you can listen to that yourself but it is lovely this morning i woke up uh four o'clock i'm normally awake very early as i've probably mentioned hundreds of times before and I could hear the birds singing. Wonderful. Open the window. No sun today. Still overcast. But the birds were singing. And the, it was daylight about half past four. Which is nice. I was sitting up in bed on my iPad answering emails. There we are, you see. An early start to the day. I like that. I love getting out into the garden. First thing in the morning. I love to get out there at six o'clock. The sun's up. Birds are singing. It's quiet. Hardly any traffic in the distance. Mind you, it's pretty quiet where we are here anyway. We don't have many, well, any main roads near us, really. So traffic-wise, it is quiet. We've got the railway, but that's a good... What's that? That must be a quarter of a mile away from us. So we do hear trains sometimes, but they're in the distance. It's a very quiet area, this, which I like. I don't like loud things, as you know. be nice to hear from you if you want to email me. Raiserants at protonmail.com as I've been away on holiday, I think I've got a little bit out of sync with answering emails. If I haven't answered yours, apologies and your messages, because I also put the podcast episodes on YouTube. I know some of you listen there. Hello to Ange. Nice to hear from you the other day. I think I've answered yours after the holiday. I've got a little bit behind with everything, I think. So not to worry. You don't care, do you? Well, it's now Saturday. Where are we? Saturday afternoon, three o'clock. We've had a lovely day here, weather-wise. Absolutely fantastic. I know it's only three quarters of an hour, but I'm going to end it here because, as I always say at the end, I don't want to waffle just for the sake of waffling, you know, just to make the time go. So you say, oh, look, there's an hour. I'd rather have three quarters of an hour of something worth listening to. <laughs> You're saying, well, we haven't had ten minutes of that yet. No, seriously. It's better to have three quarters of an hour or something probably worth listening to than adding an extra 15 minutes just trying to eke out the, uh, eke out. Do you know, was it number two daughter? She says eek. 
in her messages and stuff, she'll put E-E-E-E-K, eek. I don't know what that means. I think it means horror or something. It's funny, all this text stuff, isn't it? I can't keep up with it. People send me, are they uh, emojis, are they? And I have to look them up. I think, what does that one mean? And I've got a, I found a website where you can go and look up what the emojis mean. <laughs> I mean, some of them are obvious, but the rest of them, I haven't got a clue. Anyway, there we are. I shall see you on Wednesday. I hope you have a good uh, week or half week until then. Take care. Look after yourselves. Bye bye for now.